there are side hustles, smaller jobs that can be done with just hand tools. It's something that I would say that it's more easy money, but hard work. Hey guys, uh, Ben, Honeydew Homestead. Listen, I'm gonna talk to you in the car for a little bit because when I get to this job, I am not gonna have a lot of time um, to talk there. I'm on a really short time schedule and there's a lot to do. And so I might take a couple pictures, maybe some quick videos and, and splice that in between some of this conversation that I have with you. But um, that's just how it's gonna have to be for this one. The only reason why I'm doing this video is because I figure it's a, it's a teaching moment, right? That's what I do on this channel. I like to always take advantage of those. If you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you might remember I made a, a video about, I think I called it a landscape burrito, <laughs> which was basically, um, it was some straw that was sort of wrapped up in a germination mat and I used it as a, a sock, like a landscape sock to um, try to catch some erosion if it were to happen. Uh, and, and that video, that was a while ago. That might have been a year ago. And uh, it definitely did its job. It's doing its job still. But because the soil on this property is so sandy, and the person that was living there was not the homeowner, it was a tenant. The tenant didn't take care of that newly seeded lawn. And so parts that were very sloped just sort of ran off. They never quite germinated. There just wasn't enough moisture there. It was in a generally shaded area. And so it just didn't do well. So I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna reseed it, but I'm gonna try something a little different today. Today I'm gonna put down a nice layer of compost and I'm gonna seed into that. And then I'm gonna cover the whole thing uh, with some more straw, but I'm gonna try to find a germination mat if I can. I'm going out here. I don't have all the materials I need. I'm hoping to make a quick stop and pick that stuff up. But the idea is going to be to use layers, a layer of compost, put the seed, put some uh, fertilizer down, and then put a mat over the whole thing to uh, hold it down and to shade that seed because we've got 100 degree, literally 100 degree days coming. It's not ideal to put this in now, but it's it's literally the only day that is not going to be like 100 degrees and I'm trying not to get a heat stroke. So <laughs> we're gonna put this in now and uh, hope for the best. The idea is gonna be to use these layers to help enrich the soil, give that seed a better bed to root into, and then use some sort of matting or cover to keep it all from running off in the next rain. Because it is on a slope, because it is sandy in that area, it's definitely a tough place to grow. And it's between tall trees and the side of the house. It's literally all the worst things you could possibly want for a turf lawn. But we're gonna do our best to um, to try to get it get it ready to do at least a little bit of growing, hopefully germinate and grow a little before we start getting into the cooler months where everything slows down. I am putting down a centipede seed, so this turf is actually gonna be a little bit mixed because other parts of the lawn are Bermuda. <laughs> The only reason why I'm putting centipede here is because it is so shaded and because it does dry out so quickly because of the slope. I'm hoping that a centipede will be a little more drought resistant, a little more shade resistant, and it will be a good strong grass growing in that area once it's established. Fingers crossed, wish me luck. I'll see you guys when the job is done. You don't need a lot of tools for this. The only thing you might need is some sort of pitchfork or hay 
fork to shovel out the compost. You could use a shovel, but this is much more efficient. Some sort of landscape rake, just so you can kind of spread it out after you dump it out of the wheelbarrow. Optional, a leaf rake so you can kind of mix up the seed into that compost. Some kind of spreader is also optional. You could even use uh, your hand if you're good at spreading it, but these are relatively inexpensive. If you're really feeling frisky, you can bring a blower and a sweeper just to clean up after yourself. And lastly, obviously don't forget the grass seed and some sort of starter fertilizer or something like a 10 10 10. The only problem you'll have this time of year is you can't get the staples in the ground. Hey guys, uh, this is day two right now, which is why I'm, I'm in street clothes. I'm back at the property at, at this um, particular project. And honestly, I'm here just to babysit the sprinklers. The pressure is a little low at this property. And so I really have to move the hose around a lot in order to cover the area that is currently seated. But I figured this is a perfect opportunity to kind of wrap up a lot of the ideas and things that I was talking about yesterday. First and foremost, okay, I started this video talking about there being a, a teaching moment, right? And I think that this is a great example of a way that someone could have a side hustle and not necessarily need a lot of tools, right? It's easy to get carried away with a lot of other YouTubers out there where you see them driving hundred thousand dollar skid steers with a thirty thousand dollar mulcher at the end of it or a you know two hundred three hundred thousand dollar excavator and clearing land and you know another two hundred thousand dollar bulldozer it's real easy to get caught up in this idea that man you know i would like to do landscaping or I'd like to get into that kind of business, but it's just too expensive. There are side hustles, smaller jobs that can be done with just hand tools. It's something that I would say that it's more easy money, but hard work. <laughs> So what do I mean by that? Easy money in the sense that there are plenty of people out there who either they just don't have the back for it or they just don't want to work that hard. And to them, they have the money and it's worth it to just pay someone to do something for them that they would like done. If you looked at the tools that I used, obviously I have the pickup truck, a couple rakes, I had the, the little hay fork that I used to dump the compost out of the back of the truck. I had a wheelbarrow that I used to dump piles in, you know, the separated piles that were about, let's say, three feet apart or so. And then I used that landscape rake, that hard rake, to just dig into those and spread them out, kind of throw them out so that I get a nice thin even layer uh, across the ground. I used that little that little uh, spreader, seed spreader, which honestly you don't need. Uh, I used it because I had it, but I have seeded plenty of areas like this. This area was only, I don't know, we'll say 12 by 50. <laughs> Right? Like it wasn't a massive area, like a full acre of whatever. It was just the area that needed to be reseeded. Once I spread the seed, spread the fertilizer, I rolled the mat on top, put some staples down to keep the mat from blowing away in the wind. And, and that's it. Like that, that's the whole job. So keep in mind, anybody could do that job there's just a lot of people that don't want to do that job 
that is a perfect opportunity to jump in there and put a bid together. Walk around neighborhoods. If you see a house with bald spots, leave a card. Knock on a door. Say, hey, I can fix that for you. All right, so I think my camera is trying to tell me something. It just died on me. Uh, I think it overheated. Anyways, I'm just uh, going to say this one last thing. It's totally doable. There are side hustle opportunities out there that are relatively low in startup costs. And you just have to look for opportunities where there are things that people either don't have the ability to do on their own or don't want to do on their own, but they have the money to get it done. And all of the material costs, remember, those material costs are passed on to the person that you're doing the job for. So if you got to get a truckload of compost and it costs you $30, $40, $50, wherever you can get it from, that, that material cost is passed on uh, to, to the customer. Same thing with any other expendables, the, the germination mats, the, the landscape staples to hold it down, all of those consumable things that stay with the property that all gets passed on as a cost and then you have your own uh, business expense on top of that whatever you think your time is worth and also any depreciation of equipment that you might be using for example if it is mowing grass you want to consider the fact that that lawnmower and those weed whackers they're not going to live forever and so you have to factor that in as well. But again, that's all I'm going to say. You guys, as always, be good, be smart. I'll see you on the next one. This is absolutely ridiculous. I haven't even left the property yet and they're already moving in. Look at this. Look, they're just forming a little buffet line. No shame. Look at them. It's just like, oh, thank you. If you're wondering where all your seed went, talk to the ants. So ridiculous. This makes me so angry. That one little nugget of seed right there is probably like a dollar.